Now, if I were to tell you that MLB The Show went ahead and copied Fortnite, would you believe me? Yes or no? I want you guys to actually comment that down below. Because the theory that I have, it makes complete sense. And a lot of other games, especially sports genre games, are following the same rubric. Now, there is something in Fortnite that we all know called a battle pass. You can either pay in-game currency or real-life currency in order to purchase it. And if you purchase it, you get extra rewards along the path. It's possible to also complete it free to play, but it will take a lot longer and you will get less rewards. Now, MLB The Show does not have this exact battle pass within its game mode but it does have something very similar in the inning programs why do i say that well in fortnite the battle pass is only for a limited amount of time the inning program is only for a limited amount of time the battle pass the rewards within it you can only get it once meaning within that battle passes time period if you do not purchase it and you do not get those rewards in time by the time it expires then those rewards are gone now, although in MLB The Show you can still purchase those rewards later on, you will not be able to obtain them for free in the same manner you obtained it if you were playing within that inning program. And another sports genre game that's going to follow the same rubric has been 2K or is it going to be 2K because that's what I heard is happening in order for you to become a legend. So, let's go ahead into the play section of Diamond Dynasty and let's go into the 6 inning program. But before we jump in there, make sure you hit that like button. Let's aim for 150 likes on this video and hit that red subscribe button as well extra ways to support me as well as my other socials are inside the description box just in case you want to go ahead and follow me outside of youtube now as we can see in the sixth inning program there are a ton of rewards available now luckily for us we don't have to go ahead and pay an extra amount in order to get extra rewards and luckily for us as well just by playing the game naturally almost everyone can go ahead and complete it despite of course there being a gameplay cap and MLB the show also does give us all double XP weekend which also goes a very long way but there are certain packs within this program that you can only receive once for free and then if you want the other players you will have to purchase it but if you're a newcomer and you want some of the golds that were in the first inning program then you're out of luck and you're gonna have to pay a lot more stubs especially if you want all three and the same thing goes for the henchmen and the same thing is gonna go for the inning bosses within those programs as well now MLB The Show had done something beautiful in MLB The Show 20 following the same rubric of inning programs and we're going to dive into that in just one second but you might be wondering okay what's the big deal that they would have to go ahead and buy those diamonds what's the big deal that they would have to go ahead and basically purchase those golds the big deal is a newcomer to the game it's going to be a whole lot more expensive for them to complete Mookie Butts, let alone Mariano Rivera, let alone Shohei Otani. I mean, if you look at the price of this Jock Peterson card, it's 100k stubs. Do you think a 90 overall platoon hitter that will never go ahead and touch your Diamond Dynasty team should be worth 100k stubs? No, right? But that's what happens, unfortunately. Now, let me take a quick break and hop into MLB The Show 20, and let me show you the difference in what I believe MLB The Show needs to do in MLB The Show 22 in order to keep new players basically in the game and also keep players that take a break interested in the game. Because if you take a break right now, for example, and the seventh inning program comes out and the eighth inning program comes out and you come back to MLB The Show, you're gonna be like, damn, I missed out on everything. Another thing about it is is we know they have showdowns and we know they have conquest maps the conquest maps and the showdowns expire so all of the hidden rewards that are available within those conquest maps they're gonna be gone forever Aaron Hernandez which is crazy to me because I love getting free packs I love getting free stuffs free experience and if you're a new player you would love it too because it would help your team out tremendously but MLB the show said nah we not doing that anymore but let me show you what they did in MLB The Show 20 that I think they should re-implement in MLB The Show 22. Now first things first look at the different loadout it's brighter and it just looks sexier in my opinion this loadout right here or interface as you know loadout is more like Call of Duty you know I've been getting into Call of Duty but I'm absolutely trash so I would never upload any content on it because you guys would be saying this kid has no thumbs whatsoever. Now the 11th inning program don't even pay attention to that because the 11th inning program is the program that I'm 
MLB The Show came out with that I think they might be coming out this year with as well that will allow you to pick a second one of the bosses just in case you ever missed out on any of them. But pretend we are a new player hopping into Diamond Dynasty for the first time. This time around, it's MLB The Show 20. You go to Conquest and you're going to see that MLB The Show 20 will have a Conquest map for each and every single team. Plus, they will have a Conquest map for each and every single inning. Still available for you to go ahead and do. And another thing I think is going to be coming soon is Conquest Extreme, which is probably my favorite Conquest to do. And the program Extreme in general is going to be one of the most difficult programs for you to do. It's usually an offline program. So we can see that all of the Conquest maps are there. Now, you might be saying, are all of the showdown maps there too? Or the showdowns in general? Yes, all of the showdowns are there as well and you can still get all, all of the rewards from it as well. They also went ahead and changed because the mini bosses used to give out a standard pack. They went ahead and changed that because obviously a ton of people were just getting unlimited standard packs. The same thing happened this year and it took them about four or five innings in order to go ahead and change it as well from the showdown. But as you can see, both the Conquest and both the Showdown are available, and that's going to be crucial because when we go into the inning programs, right, let's say we don't want to start off with the 11th inning because that's the latest one, but we want to start off with the first program to ever come out into MLB The Show, which was the first inning program. I want to start from the beginning. Let's say I have zero stars, and in order for me to beat the program, which beating the program, by the way, is always going to be just getting the bosses. Everything else after that is extra. If you want to see a program that I didn't beat in general let's go to the 10th where you can see that at 300 program stars was when you officially beat the program now that's a Ken Griffey jr. program meaning he was the only boss available but in the ninth inning as you can see I did not go ahead and complete the entire thing and at 300 program stars that's when I was done with the program now if you are a new player, you still have an opportunity in completing each and every single one of these inning programs and getting all of the exclusive packs from these inning programs without a doubt. You start off with the showdown. It gave you 70. So now we're at 70 out of 300. That's necessary. The missions, they no longer apply because the missions would only apply during that season. So you can kiss these goodbye for right now, except for the ones that are like specific two players that come out or came out during that season so the Curtis Granderson one it was still 100% one that you could complete so is the Kerry Wood one so we can add 20 that's gonna be 90 in total the conquest map gives you 30 that's gonna be 120 doing the first inning collection is going to go ahead and give you an extra 75 so now we're at 195 and then collecting these three is another 60 we're now at 255 I believe and then the moments that are still available are another 16 we are now at 271 and then I do believe for some odd reasons that these missions up here will also still count but i'm not 100 percent sure but my point is you still had an opportunity to go ahead and get 300 program stars in order to complete the inning program in order to complete the boss and get yourself some of the exclusive packs that would be a lot more expensive later on. I think this was the best method of them doing programs. It allowed players to, despite how long they played the game for, to still have an opportunity to go ahead and complete it on the first day, which is cool beans if you want to. And then if you want to continue gaining stars, you would be able to do that and there would be a ton of rewards available for you. I think this is what they need to go back to. And I think it will be the best change that they can make, not only for new players, but for players that like taking breaks from them will be the show and exploring other games and then for hardcore players that like making all accounts as well if you did enjoy today's content please make sure to hit that like button or subscribe button have a blessed day and night stay positive stay safe stay blessed and i will catch you all in the next one peace out